Hi everyone, um, welcome to my 34 week pregnancy vlog. Um, I am 34 weeks and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and three days today. Um, looks quite sexy, little, little bra strap there. Uh, okay, so this week has been pretty busy, uh, just sort of figuring out logistics. I had a, um, a catch up with my midwife. I posted about um, <coughs> induction, the possible induction coming up. And, um, you know, I obviously have all my go-to things that have worked for me in the past in terms of bringing on labor if I've ever needed to. But I was really curious to hear what the community said. And so if you're watching this and you have any other ideas on how to bring this baby on, uh, ideally before 34 weeks, uh, thir well, gosh, no, not 34, ideally before 39 weeks, um, please comment below and um, or comment on your Zen Mama. So I'll show you the belly. <coughs> Still got this lingering cough. Okay, there she is. Measuring right on 34 weeks, um, according to the measuring tape from the midwife, Julie, when she measures my belly, it was right at 34 weeks. <coughs> I had my meeting with her the other day and I just wanted to pick her brains a little bit more in terms of what a induction would look like I'm <coughs> bloody cough. Um, you know, I'm really hesitant about being induced. And I think probably because, you know, we've written a book about all the different stages of having a baby. And we talk specifically about induction. And um, I get really nervous at the idea of um, the cascade of interventions. So my fear was that if i get my waters broken at 37 and a half weeks which is when they prefer um, allo immunization babies to be born between 37 and 38 weeks which is the sort of global guidelines i was nervous that my body wouldn't be ready to go into labor um, after an induction and I really, really, really want to avoid Pitocin, which is also known as Syntocin here in Australia. Um, so I said, look, the most I want you to do is break my water. And, <coughs> and I will walk and I will jump on the trampoline and I will have that canoodling. I will walk up the hills. I will squat, whatever it takes, figure of eights on the ball um, to get labor going. So <coughs> the one thing that my midwife did say is that if my cervix isn't favorable at 37 and a half weeks, she won't even be able to break my water anyway. So I'd have to be starting to a face. There'd have to be some signs of my body getting ready to go into labor. Otherwise she won't be able to break my waters. And oftentimes they put the, the gel in to help a face and soften the cervix and to dilate. And then they break the waters. But once the gel is administered, I would then be monitored because the gel <coughs> can make the baby feel, the baby can get anxious. It can affect the baby negatively, the gel. So I basically wanna try and avoid that situation because I would hate for the baby to then be affected and then the heart rate goes up and then it's like, go, 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 we're gonna get this baby out. Um, I want the induction to be as gentle as possible. So ideally, I think the new sort of plan that I've landed in or landed at, <coughs> I'm so sorry about my cough. I know it's bloody annoying. I have had this cold for about three weeks now, three and a half weeks. And I'm the only one in my family that can't kick the cough. Um, anyway, so I think what I've wrapped my head around is I have one doctor 
that says 37 to 38 weeks. I have another doctor that says we'll let you go to 38 plus six. <coughs> so I think that that's going to be my plan is that from 37 weeks, I might even start next week at 35 weeks, start ramping up all the things that I know can help you go into labor naturally. So today I picked up a big batch of red raspberry leaf tea. I've ordered my clary sage. Um, I've ordered my evening primrose capsules, which I'll start inserting uh, vaginally. You prick a hole in it and then you insert it up as high as possible near the cervix. That's something my midwife has talked to me about today. I started eating a bunch of pineapple um, tomorrow. I have dates and pineapple. I'm going to start drinking my red raspberry <coughs> leaf tea. I'm using my rings. I'll show you this obsession that I have. Look, I've, oh, I've closed my rings. How exciting. So they're my rings. I've closed them. Um, have I? I've almost closed them. Let's see. Yes, I have. I've closed every one of my rings today. So that means exercise, movement, being on my feet. I went on the <coughs> I went on the trampoline the other day, yesterday with the kids. And instead of jumping, because I, I want to avoid any unnecessary jumps, um, I sort of was like running on there like I was on a treadmill. And actually, it felt really good on the knees because I've noticed that a couple of times when I go for a light jog around the property, um, my knees feel achy because I'm obviously a lot heavier than I typically am. And so that was actually a nice sort of light way to do a little jog on the trampoline. So I just went round and round in circles and I wore my little Apple watch and, um, and you know, I'm really mindful about my heart rate, not spiking my heart rate up too much, but <coughs> really trying to get in, um, a lot of walking, a lot of movement today. I'm at 8,000. 155 steps, but usually I end up around 11,000 by the end of the day. Um, and the distance walked today was 6.15 kilometers. Um, and I usually go anywhere between seven Ks and 12 Ks a day, depending on what I'm doing and how much I'm moving. And I know that <coughs> all of these things being active in this way, it's going to really help me through labor, help me feel fit. Um, I would say today is the first day I really slowed down. I've been doing so much. I've been going to F45, I've been hanging out with the kids, I've been doing play dates. I'm completely OCD about the state of the house right now. Um, I am in general, I get really funny about how tidy the home is. And I think this house in Adelaide in particular, we have a really massive space. Our, our home is very sort of spacious, even though it's um, like in LA, we have more of a tree house. We have a lot more rooms, whereas in Adelaide, we have really big rooms, but fewer rooms, if that makes sense. And so I noticed the mess more here. And I think we have less stuff in Australia. So everything feels like I have the perfect place for it. And I've been a real stickler about the kids doing their 30 minutes of tidy up at the end of the day, putting the toys in all the places where things are labeled and the kids know where to get them. Um, and I actually find that they play with toys more because they, they know where to go to find their favorite toys. So I've been really sort of OCD about cleaning and just being on my feet, but not actual like scrubbing floors, um, more tidying, putting things in the right places. Uh, we had an architect come up this week because we live on 10 acres of land and our home was a school camp. I think I've talked about this before. So we actually just have one main area, which was a school hall um, with like a raised stage where people would do performances and there was kind of an entrance area and that's the main house. And then there's the dormitories. So the dormitories um, where all the kids used to sleep, we've turned them into an office for Mark, a garage, <coughs> another spare office. And then um, like a sort of like a teenager retreat. However, my mum lives in that little retreat at the moment because we're building her um, 
uh, place on the property. So there's the caretaker's cottage, which is a really run down, completely derelict, small cottage. Um, and we're going to knock that down, rebuild that. Mum will live in the cottage. She'll have her own land, her own space. And then Isaac's going to go into where my mum's living in the teenager retreat. And then we're building two more bedrooms, which will connect to the main house so that at least Bodie and Forrest will have their own bedrooms. Poet will have a bedroom. And then this baby will be in with us until she ends up sharing with one of her siblings. So we've got work to do on the house and so that's been really fun just kind of envisioning what that's going to look like in the future so that's really that's been a part of this week like walking around the property and talking with an architect and a builder and saying oh well you know we, we want to ultimately have <coughs> six bedrooms so that the kids each have a bedroom and um and my mum has her own space and yeah, so that was that's been a um a big part of this week, and I every other pregnancy I've either been moving or renovating, and this pregnancy I'm not renovating anything for the first time, but I'm talking about renovating, and I think that's just my thing. I I get pregnant and then I start thinking about like how do I renovate, how do I make my uh, make my space more um I don't know just like. A space that feels great to have this many children in. I want each of them to have their own areas that they feel good about. And right now at our home in Adelaide, even though it's a really spacious house, <coughs> there are only two bedrooms in our house. There's our bedroom, this one, which is small. And then there's the kids' bedroom, which is share a shared bedroom where they're all sleeping, apart from Poet, she sleeps right here in our room in the little corner here. It's a really big kids' bedroom, so the kids go and hang out in there and they all sleep in there. But I'm just really looking forward to expanding and making sure that if they want their own bedrooms, they can have their own bedrooms. So that's been a bit of a project that I've been working on this week. Um, yeah, and so really I've just been wrapping my head around, all right, I'm gonna get things going before 38 plus six, if I reach 39, <coughs> then I'll go into the hospital and I'll have a birth center birth. And th that'll be great. They're the sorts of births I've had before anyway. So Forrest was in the birth center, Poet was in the birth center, and then um, potentially this baby will be in the birth center. But I'm hopeful, fingers crossed, that, um, the next few weeks, I can work really hard to be able to have my home birth and that the baby will come um, before 39 weeks. And with Bodhi, my water actually broke at 38 plus six. So if that was to happen this time round, I think they would let me labor and have the baby by 39 weeks. So, I'm trying to figure out like, what is her birth date going to be? I think no matter what, it's going to probably be, I, I would say it's going to be between like the, the 8th of August and the 18th of August. I think somewhere in there is when this baby's going to be born. <coughs> um, and I'm excited. Everything's really set up. I've got my plum and sparrow little wicker basket coming because we didn't have that anymore with a little rocker that's still coming i got this really great baby carrier from r to pop um i hope i'm saying that right really gorgeous sort of um velvety golden color which is really beautiful that mark picked out with me something that he would be comfortable wearing as well so i have my more structured carriers and i have my wraps um and then I have all the outfits, I have everything ready to go. We've got the car seat, we've got the Duna car seat that we brought over from Wales. Um, and just sort of getting ready and kind of hunkering down. It's pissing down with rain here and it's so sort of nice being cozy and warm with the kids. And um, so it's been a really good week. And I have to say thank you so much for all your beautiful comments and your suggestions and I've read them all. And I really appreciate you. You're a wonderful community. So 
Thank you so much and I will see you next week.